Hello, my name is Henry Holtz. I'm a Chinese student that learns American curriculum in international school. I've done my research in 11th grade summer vacation, which is titled Testing for Normality of Stock Returns. And I'm going to share my screen so that I can start my presentation. So I would like to start with the introduction of my background. I've always been curious about the difference between US economy and China, China economy, because the United States is a unique country. I found that every time the United States is experiencing a time frame of, of prosperity, it is always followed with another time frame of economic depression. I'm curious about that. It's like there's a pattern cycle in US economy. So that's why I decided to choose the topic in order to help me find out the reason for the situation of, of US economy. The United States stock market has been going through cycles of boom and bust. That is, and it is still going through such boom and bust. I was curious about distribution of stock returns. So I made the assumption of it being normally distributed. Why do I choose such distribution? It's because normal, normal distribution is one of the most important graph figures in almost every field, especially in economy. Economists love to use such distribution to predict future trends and to analyze past, past things. I made graphs using my data sets from AAPL, also known as Apple Income and the SPX 500, which is the 500 companies that are representative of the United States. I've also constructed particular testing methods to test my hypothesis. Eventually, not only did I utilize the testing methods that I use, I combined my high school stats knowledge to and develop a different approach to the solution. And after my comparison, if the sample size is greater than 3,000, there is barely no difference between my own testing methods and the professional testing methods. I found and understood the pattern of US stock market after scanning the source data, because I found out that only looking into the figures isn't enough to help me solve and crack those kind of phenomena. So I'd like to feel, I feel it necessary to let you guys understand several technical words. First off, stock return. It is the percent rate of return over a measurement period. Mathematically, stock return looks like the equation that yn minus y1 divided by y1. To use simpler words, stock return, it illustrates how a country behaves over a period of time. If because over time, if the country is developing in, in its economy, the stock return will be much greater than part, much greater than zero. But if it's not, it means the GDP is barely expanding. The stock market and stock return really measures how a country behaves over a period of time. And bear market, it's a technical word that means a declining market, a period or oh, for example, like an economic depression period when investors are no longer interested in investing because they're likely to lose money. And everyone at that period are likely to suffer from poverty. And bull market, it is the opposite of bear market. It means a rising market. So that also means people are likely to experience, they're likely to earn money and it's a period where everyone loves. And here's an expressive figure to let you guys see the difference between the two types of markets. And before I choose to draw out what kind of graphs, I really need to decide what time spans I'd like to choose. Before, like at first, I only wanted to use the one year's time span because I feel like normal distribution could only be explained and expressed at that time, time length. But over time, I found out that when a time span gets larger to like three years, five years, 
their, their idea appears to be patterns, cycles of boom and bust. That makes me in interested and I would like to include those in my papers as well. So let's just analyze them. The graphs I used it covered one year, three year, and 10 year, which all of them show the distinctive way of distribution. So here are the two, here are the different types of figures. Here is the one year. It looks like as if it is normally distributed, but I also used calculations of testing methods to, to fully understand and fully calculate out if it's normal or not. And here are the other graphs that makes me, makes me interested. The other graphs that have peaks, that have different time frames, so distinctive that I could not ignore them. Ignore them. And what's changing these graphs? As we can see here, this graph, at this point, I, I've already concluded that the one year stock return is mostly normally distributed. The one year time span is predictable. And even if it is not like a bit far from normal distribution, we could assume it to be normal so that economists can use such model to predict future trends. But here is the change. When the time span get greater, there are three peaks at maximum. They are really like a mixed period and a secular bull market and a secular bear bull market. That's a change from time to time. When the time, time frame gets larger, there are more and more peaks. What does this signify? And here is my discovery of an anomaly. According to my observation, most 10 year graphs usually looks like this. Here it goes, three peaks signifying a uh, secular bull market, a mixed period that covers both secular bull market and bear market, and another secular bear market. However, when I looked into the decade of starting from 2001, I found it to be really abnormal. Why is that? As you can see, there is only one peak. It looks like as if it is normal. The 10 year graph looks like it only covers one year. There's barely any changes. All of the data points are centering around zero. It's a thing, what does it mean? It means over 10 years, the US stock price doesn't increase. It means over 10 years, US stock market is struggling. They're struggling to survive from the from this strike, from economic depression. And at a start from 2010, the economy are starting to rebound. Looking at a source data, I found something. Why does the graph look so abnormal? As we can see, I collected the data and put it in a chart to compare them. Here is the beginning of 2001. And here, it's after the transition of 10 years, starting from 2011, after 10 years, the stock price is even lower. What does that mean? It means US stock market aren't behaving so well. And in the middle of the 10 years, we can see fluctuations, a huge fluctuation actually, fluctuating at first increasing of stock price, but later decrease of stock price, cycling and cycling. Such pattern is so abnormal. It signifies that the US stock market has, that is indeed the most severe strike of economic depression. But when I looked back into after the years, after 2011, that is the decade we are currently experiencing, I found out that this decade is by far the most prosperous decade U.S. has ever experienced. It is a cycle. Does it mean that U.S. Does it mean U.S. will suffer the next, next several years? I think so, because after scanning through the source data, the history had led us to know that the US prosperity could not last long as well as the depression. The depression could, all, could also not last long because there's always the pattern, the fluctuation. But that is the matter of presidency for the president to control, to seize and to control the size of economic prosperity and depression. 
that is the method of human factors. So combining those factors, the US government is formed. The US economy is formed. The stock market is behaving like this. Is this an irre irre irreversible trend? I really think so, because every time the United States experience something like this, it's some kind of irreversible trend. Even the government tries everything, tries all their best. It seems that the depression will always last long if there, are, there had been a previous prosperity before. So after I've done my research, now I have enough evidence to conclude. One year stock return is often normally distributed and we could predict with one year time span. And even if there is a larger time span, we could see the part pattern, perhaps even too large to get ourselves alarmed, to get our stock out or borrow or buy or sell. That is our decision. And we can predict that in order to, so that we can lose less money. The distributions of data of longer time span will have no more than three peaks. I've tried 30 years, 20 years of time span, but all of these are only having three peaks at most. So this means that the pattern, the decade is also a pattern. It is like secular bull market, then mixed period, then bull market. It's a cycle. And the US stock market seems to follow an irreversible pattern. The greater the prosperity, the more severe recession in the future will be, vice versa. And that's all of my content. I'm looking forward to seeing unique researchers, researchers from other scholars as well. Thank you for watching.